What did Pythagoras of Cortona used to eat? 570 to 495 BC. All of your life is just a hyphen. So make good use of it. Today we'll talk about the diet of Pythagoras and the students of Pythagoras. What does the name Pythagoras even mean? It means the mouthpiece of Pythian, the oracle at Delphi. Many of the followers of Pythagoras, and he had hundreds of students, considered him to be Apollo himself. Many of you know this channel through my diet and nutrition playlist, where we talked about vitamins and minerals. Minerals. Today we shall start another playlist, the diet of the stars. What celebrities and famous people in antiquity and modernity used to eat. The following passages come from Will Durant's The Story of Civilization, Volume 2, The Life of Greece. If you have not read this book, by the way, I've no idea what you're doing with your life. Hey, Medicosis, is it just like a small booklet that I can finish after dinner? Shut up. 10 freaking volumes, one of which can give you an epidural hematoma if you're not careful. So let's go. I quote, the name means mouthpiece of Pythian, that's Pythagoras, Oracle of Delphi. Many of his followers considered him to be Apollo himself, and some laid claim to having caught a flash of his golden thigh, some quadriceps action. Of all men, says Heraclitus, who praised parsimoniously, Pythagoras was the most assiduous inquirer. He visited, we are told, Arabia, Syria, Phoenicia, Chaldea, India, and Gaul, and came back with an admirable motto for tourists. When you are traveling abroad, look not back at your own borders, i.e., when in Rome, do what Romans do. Prejudices should be checked at every port of entry. Something similar to what the government might say. More surely he visited Egypt, where he studied with the priests and learned much astronomy and geometry and perhaps a little nonsense. Thank you, Will. Returning to Samus and finding that the dictatorship of Polycrates interfered with his own, he migrated to Cortona, hence Pythagoras of Cortona, being now over 50 years of age. But wait. There he set up shop as a teacher, and his imposing presence, his varied learning, and his willingness to receive women as well as men into his school soon brought him several hundred students. For the students in general, Pythagoras established rules that almost turned the school into a monastery. The members bound themselves by a vow of loyalty, both to the master and to one another. Ancient tradition is unanimous that they practiced a communistic sharing of goods while while they lived in the Pythagorean community, and this is why you're watching this video, they were not to eat flesh, or eggs, or beans. Wine was not forbidden, but water was recommended. A dangerous prescription in Lower Italy today. Oh, come on, Durant and his humor. So funny. Some precious dad jokes. Possibly the prohibition of flesh food was a religious taboo bound up by the belief in the transmigration of souls. Quote, men must beware of eating their ancestors. Close quote. Got some prion disease action. No one will get this joke. The members were forbidden to kill any animal that does not injure man or to destroy a cultivated tree. They were to dress simply and behave modestly, never yielding to laughter, <laughs> and yet not looking stern, like Mike Pence. They were not to swear by the gods, for every man ought so to live as to be worthy of belief without an oath. They were not to offer victims in sacrifice, but they might worship at altars that were unstained with blood. He probably got hemophilia. At the close of each day, they were to ask themselves what wrongs they had committed, what duties they have neglected, what good they had done, i.e. they kept a journal. Pythagoras himself, unless he was an excellent actor, followed these rules more rigorously, rigu rigorously, I can't even talk, than any student. Certainly, his mode of life won him much respect and authority among his pupils, that no one grumbled at his pedagogical dictatorship. And Otus Epha Ipsi Dixit, i.e. he himself said it, the master said so, became the formula for a final decision in almost any field of conduct or theory. 
So instead of WWJD, they had WWPS. We are told with touching reverence that the master never drank wine by day and lived for the most part on bread and honey with vegetables as dessert, that his robe was always white and spotless. Doesn't seem like an assiduous inquirer to me. That he was never known to eat too much or to make love, that he never indulged in laughter or jest or stories that he never chastised anyone, not even a slave. Timon of Athens thought him a juggler of solemn speech, just like Churchill. Engage in fishing for men, got some Gardnerella vaginalis action. Initiation into the Pythagorean society required, in addition to purification of the body by abstinence and self-control, a purification of the mind by scientific study. The new pupil was expected to preserve for five years the, quote, Pythagorean silence, unquote, presumably to accept instruction without questions or argument before being accounted a full member or being permitted to see, i.e. study under Pythagoras. Students these days, Pythagoras did not let the inmates run the asylum. He had to put his foot down. The scholars were accordingly divided into exo or outer students, and eso or inner members. Sound like two ophthalmological conditions like ectropian, entropian, exoskeleton, endoskeleton, you get the idea, it's the same lingo. Pythagoras himself, according to Greek tradition, discovered many theorems, above all, that the sum of the angles in any triangle, which is 180, equals two right angles, because each right angle is 90 degrees, 90 plus 90 is 180, got it? And the most famous Pythagorean theorem, the square of the hypotenuse, which is A, of a right-angled triangle, like this one, equals the sum of the squares, not the square of the sums, of the other two sides. Apolluterus, he probably stinked, a great trade name for a deodorant, by the way, tells us that when the master discovered this theorem, he sacrificed a hecat tomb, a hundred animals, in thanksgiving. But this would have been scandalously on Pythagorean. Thank you, Will Durant. So this is what Pythagoras used to eat. Bread, honey, vegetables as desserts. No meat, no wine, no eggs, no beans, and a spotless garment. If this video gets 3,000 likes, I will make another video about a very famous and brilliant lady who almost ate nothing but chocolate and sweet. The diet of the stars. These are 12 different patients. What do they have in common? Answer. All of them have vitamin C deficiency. Vitamin C is known as what? Ascorbic acid. A means no. Scorboat or scorbutic means scurvy. Translation, if you eat vitamin C, you will not get scurvy. That's what the name means. I hope you have watched my video on vitamin C. You'll find it in the diet and nutrition playlist. What are the symptoms of mercury poisoning? How about iron overload, copper overload, cadmium poisoning, cobalt toxicity, lead poisoning, arsenic poisoning? You can learn about all of these by downloading my toxicology course on my website medicosisperfectsnails.com. For more emergency conditions like arrhythmias, angina, myocardial infarction, strokes, etc., download my emergency medicine high yields course. If you do not want to download my courses but would rather watch them right here on YouTube, click the join button and choose the highest tier. Please subscribe and hit the bell, support my channel here or here, go to my website to download my courses, notes and cases. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense.